All right, good morning, St. Andrews. I'm going to invite up Miss Debbie Chesney and Hannah Beaver. And as they are making their way up front, I've got two things. If you are a fifth grader or a senior, would you quietly make your way over to this wall. Fifth graders line up first, like closest to the front, and seniors towards the back. I have a feeling that as fifth graders and seniors, you can follow those directions. But I, I want to introduce, um, Debbie's going to come up and speak on behalf of SPIES, but our amazing and fearless leader, our SPIES program is special people whose identity is eternally important. Um, and Hannah, has been leading this crusade for the last three years and is an unbelievable part of our children's program to bring in kiddos who need and want to learn about Jesus and who are doing amazing things through what you bring to them on Sunday mornings. She's pouring into their families and supporting them in this way. And we could not do it without her and her heart for the special needs ministry that she's leading. But it is, bar none, one of the best things going on on this campus. And so I'm going to let Debbie take it away and you sell it like I know you can. Sell it. Guess what? Y'all, thank you so much for, for volunteering and for bringing your kids and grandkids and friends to our special needs Sunday school class. I don't know if y'all know this, but most churches do not have something like this. And I hear out in the community constantly that this is a really good place because of that. And I thank you. Jesus made very clear in Matthew 25, what you do for the least of these, you do for me. So thank you all for what you do. It matters. It matters eternally. And I can't even imagine what Jesus is doing, just looking down and going, y'all are my people because those are my people. They are wonderfully and perfectly made. So if you want to be a part of this, all you have to have is a pulse, a heartbeat, um, anything else, breath in your lungs, and be in the seventh grade or older. We need help with volunteers. We have a staff, so there's nothing you have to be trained to do, but we need your hearts and your hands to serve Christ further in this mission field that we have. Anything else? Oh, sign up in the back. There's a uh, QR code and a clipboard. Is there anything else in the back? There's donuts in the back? I don't know. Um, is that it? So thank you, and thank you, Hannah. Thank you, you guys, so much. So as Debbie was saying, um, my name's Hannah Beaver, and I do the special needs ministry here on campus. Um, it's actually been, we're finishing up our fifth year. We're kind of always quietly in the back doing our thing, um, but it has been. It's been five years. I can't believe it. And most of this time, all these people have been here helping me. It's, it's been unbelievable. Yeah. But to um, continue the program, sadly, we are losing a couple of our seniors that have been with us all along the way, and a few more that weren't able to be with us this morning. Um, so we need more youth volunteers. If you're seventh grade or up, adult helpers, if you're a parent, please, if you have the time to give us on a Sunday, we do need volunteers. As Debbie said, we have staff. Um, so you don't need to be afraid if you don't have any background in special needs. We have staff that does. But we just need helpers and volunteers to help make it more of an inclusive, inclusive environment. Um, so please, uh, if you have any interest, just sign up and I'll contact you towards the end of the summer. And you could just come to a meeting and just see what we're all about and see if you, can, if you feel like you're up to the challenge. Because it's really awesome. Um, so, without further ado, I want to thank these people. We've got Amanda, Holly, Harrison, Diane, Jenna, and my daughter, Kayden. I couldn't do it without them. So give them a round of applause.
That is just one of the many things that make St. Andrews such a special place. And so on this special Sunday, um, I just have to say that I have an extra tender heart as a mom of a senior who's about to be recognized shortly, but I do have to say something on behalf of my fifth graders. So this group of fifth graders were going into first grade when I started here. And so what a special little journey that we've had as they've come through Kids Fellowship. They've seen Fellowship Hall back in its old glory. They saw it get beautiful. They've seen the gym in its original state, and they saw it get beautifuler. Um, but this group of kids, I also, if, if you don't know what our Sunday mornings look like, we go down to the gym. We pile in a big, large group. I get to teach from kindergartners up to fifth grade. So these guys, as they get to the spring of fifth grade, they're probably, they're getting itchy for youth, and that's good. But these kids have been with us, and they hear the group teaching, and then we go into small groups. And I've had the opportunity um, at, at a couple different weeks throughout the year to be their leader, their fifth grade leader. And the conversations that we get to have and what their curiosities of faith are is incredible. And so my, my reminder to you all, and this is what I held up last week, you're never too old for an object lesson, you guys, is that last week we held up, do we follow the path of the world or do we follow the path of God's word? And so my prayer for you, and we're going to pray over you shortly, um, is that you all would, as you walk into junior high, what the next steps are, that you all will keep your eyes focused on what God has planned for you ignoring what the world is telling you, but keeping your focus on God. And I love that so many of these kids, all of these kids come from families who are plugged in here at St. Andrews and make that a priority. So I'm going to call them up. There's some slides that we're going to queue up with each of their pictures. Um, You all are getting to take home a really special devotional, and there's something special written inside for each of you, unique on your birthday. And you guys have to tell you, as I was writing the notes, This group of fifth graders, I think there's six of them with crisscross birthdays. I was reading the devotionals and marking up each one, and I'm like, I've read this before several times. So there's several, there's three of you with one birthday together, two with another birthday together, and I think two more with another identical birthday. It's wild. But okay, we're going to start and bring them up, and then we'll take a fifth grade picture. We'll scooch over and we'll allow our seniors to come up front. So our very first fifth grader is Kayton Beaver. Followed by Elizabeth Bryant. You want to come stand right up here on the top. Piper Cadwalder. Maddie Chalfont. Clary Corrigan. Lottie Corrigan. Raleigh Fry, Madge Herman, L. Johnson, sorry, sweetie, Nolan Lawler, Eloise McMurray. Faye McWilliams, Emmy Osborne, Caroline Percy, Bobby Porterfield, Preston Rouse. Sarah Beth Toppin, Knox Trevino, Mark Voss, Andy West, and last but certainly not least, Lucy Williams. What an exceptional group we have of fifth graders, and what a blessing and honor it has been to get to teach and love on them these last couple of years. So as we, we're going to get to honor you and pray for you in just a second, 
as you guys are about to move up to youth ministries, but what an honor and privilege it has been to get to be your leader. And I pray that as a church, that we will always be supportive of these kids as they grow in their faith. Um, that is such a hope and a wish for all of us. I'm going to introduce Pastor Anthony, who's going to honor our seniors. You guys can give it up for the youth ministry, too. Come on now. Well, hey, I'm just, I'm just looking at all these wonderful fifth graders, and uh, I'm just so excited uh, as we have uh, new blood coming into the youth ministry with these fifth graders. I just want to tell you, uh, fifth grade families, they are more than welcome. They're going to start joining us this summer. So technically, they're sixth graders as of right now. So we, if you, they're interested in coming to camp with us, we have some open gym opportunities. We have some Bible study opportunities. We invite y'all to partake and join us uh, starting now. So uh, thank you so much for that. But we have some time where we have our seniors. And uh, I remember this season in my life, uh, and it was a crazy one, and I'm sure many of you do too. But uh, the seniors, this is the really amazing part about St. Andrew's Church is that now we have extensions going into the world, right? Many of us have chosen our homes here, but now we have seniors that are extensions from our church that are taking our love, Jesus' grace, into their future community. So I'm going to call their names up, and uh, they're going to stand. Where do we think is a good way to stand? Anywhere? We'll just have them stand up front. And then Trey and Shannon are going to help give, um, pass out a devotional. Uh, we bought them a devotional. It's called uh, New Morning's Mercies. And in it, um, just so you all know, we made it so that the, the perimeter of the pages are you're able to write your notes in. And uh, I know that you're losing out on some proximity of some of the voices that are so important to you in your life. And I just hope that through this devotional that you guys would be inspired each and every day uh, to hear the true voice that matters most. And that's the word of God uh, to inspire you, encourage you, and be there for you guys as you're going in this next season of your life. Uh, so if you hear your name, would you please come forward? Can we give it up? And we have some pictures, so feel free to read on what they're doing. So Carrie Gully, give it up for Carrie, y'all. All right, and then we have Connolly Kate Love. All right, Alonzo Peeler. Zizi Azar. Zizi. John Bismeyer. <laughs> Holly Nash. Uh, we're going to give a shout out. He's not here, but Jackson Hildebrand. He's already away at school. Parks Zunker. Grace Crocker, where are you at, Grace? She's ready. And then we have Hunter Jones. Give it up for Hunter, please. Uh, before we pray over y'all, fifth graders and seniors, um, we just thought it would be really awesome. Trey Gwynn, who helps out with the youth ministry, he's a professor at a university in Carnet Word, and so he gets to be a lot around college students. So he just wanted to share just an encouraging word to you all. Thank you so much. I'll be brief. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who lives in Austin, and I was asking him, how are things going with church? How are things going with that? And he said a phrase to me that I've heard before that I really don't like hearing. And he said the phrase, I'm just not getting much out of it. And I'm I mean, I've been at churches where I didn't feel like I was getting much out of it, uh, and I've heard that before, and I heard it the other day, and I kind of thought, well, that's sad. Let me tell you what I'm getting out of church right now. Not only uh, the opportunity to connect with the Holy Spirit right here in this building with all of you, but look in front of you. Can anybody say you're not getting something out of church? Do you see the hope of the world right in front of you? Can we give a round of applause to these incredible young people? Yeah. 
So I just, I want to thank you, church. As I look out at all of you, I want to thank you for your generosity, not just of your, of your precious resources, but also the way that you pray for these young people, the way that you help fill them up while they're here and also send them off into the world that they are going into. And young people, I want to tell you a quick word. I am so proud of you. If you all out there are proud of these people, I'm going to ask you to clap and snap one more time because we're... And when I say that I'm proud of you, I want you to know I'm not only proud of who you are, right? Like, it's, it's easy to look at you and be like, wow, these are some beautiful kids with so much bright future. Uh, I'm not just proud of who you are. I'm proud of who you are becoming. And I'm confident in who you are becoming because I know what you're rooted in. You're rooted in the truth. You're rooted in the truth because the people out here, whether blood relatives or community relatives, these people care about you and they've been helping make sure that you are grounded in truth. And so we don't just have to be proud of who you are, we can be confident in who you are becoming. And I say this especially for our uh, 12th graders who are graduating and you know they're going off to a variety of different adventures. Some of them may be right here in Bear County, some of them may be across the country, some of them may be across the globe, but I am confident that wherever you are going, you are going to be just fine, and that your future is bright, and that especially in a time when, I don't know, it's a little chaotic out there. I get, you know, I was in a hotel last night, I like forced myself to not turn on the news, because it's just a little chaotic, but right here in front of me is the hope of the world because you're grounded in truth and you have so much ahead of you. For our graduating seniors, this is super nerdy, but I wrote a book a few years ago called Adventures in Adulting. And I'm gonna be giving a copy to everyone here today, Adventures in Adulting. You know, if you can't fall asleep and you can't find melatonin, this book will help, okay? Um, so you can read that book. It's got some proclamations of truth for you, like the fact that you are worthy. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You were born worthy. You will always be worthy because you are sons and daughters of the Most High King. We are so proud of you. I'll tell you a couple things that I'm gonna be praying for these young people over the summer. I'm gonna be praying these things. I'm gonna be praying that uh, the God of the universe would establish the work of your hands wherever you go. Whether you're going off to college or whether you're going off to an exciting job or adventure, that, that the God of the universe would establish the work of your hands. And then I am going to also be praying that no matter where you go, that you'd be reminded that he will always be the lamp into your feet, the light into your path. That he will establish the work of your hands. He will be the lamp into your feet, the light into your path, no matter where you go. I'm going to ask Pastor Crocker to send us off with a prayer. And thank you, young people. We are so proud of you. To, to assist on the prayer? <laughs> um, all right, as we do here, this is really cool. This is a great group uh, for me, obviously, for many different reasons. There are some people up here who I married their parents, um, which is awesome. There's, there's more than one person up here who I was there on the day that they were born. Um, and so, hmm. it's this one right here. She gets, she gets me every time, my little cousin. Um, so we are uh, very excited about this group. And as we do, as you all know, we always uh, put them down the middle and we pray over them. That's what we do here at St. Andrews. So Bismire, would you lead us up, my brother? And walk down there towards the end and follow suit. All seniors, fifth graders fall in behind the seniors. We're going to gather together. We're going to stand up as a community, as a body, because they aren't just kids of their families. They're our kids. And so we're going to put hands on these kids and pray over them and bless them as they go into this new transitional stage of life. All right, that's good. Stop. Fifth graders, keep going. Stop. All right, everybody reach out and grab a senior or a fifth grader. If you're, if you're in the balcony, just extend your hand out. Father, we thank you and praise you so much for these, your sons and daughters. We thank you for the way that you have uniquely created them, that you have called them your son. You have called them your daughter. No matter where they're going, Father, as these fifth graders are going up into the dark world of middle school, may you be with them. May you give them strength. They are not mules. They are not knights. They are not panthers. They are your children. Allow them to know that, to find their way and their path through the halls of middle school. May they never waver from understanding that they are blessed by you. And God, those seniors down at the other end of the room, Father, we thank you and praise you for them. We thank you that they have been called your sons and daughters. God, I thank you so much that you've called some of them Aggie, some of them Longhorns, Razorbacks, 
bulldogs. None of them were worthy to be called a horn frog, but that's okay, Lord. We thank you for them. We pray that those labels don't define them. What defines them is that they were created in your image, your son, your daughter. May you give them the strength and the discipline and the determination to go into the world proclaiming your glory that no matter what the world tries to put on them or say about them, their identity is rooted firmly in you. May they never know a day without knowing your peace, your presence, and your love. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. amen. All right, kids, you could go out with Miss Natalie through the back. And the rest of you, if you would please share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. worship together. Give him praise and glory.
give somebody a fist bump and say, sit down. And then take a seat. And take a seat. All right, that took a lot of time. I have very little time. The good news is I have a very short sermon for you today. Um, so it's amazing how we planned that. We'll take a second say good morning to everybody watching online. Thanks for joining in with us wherever you are. My name is Pastor Michael, one of the pastors here at the church. Couldn't be more thrilled to have you online, but I would be more thrilled if you were here in person like these lovely people. Good morning, balcony people. Hello, Nave. Right side, come on. Left side. We literally had some people go to the left side today, and they told me as they're walking by, we want to scream this morning. Um, so that's the scream section. Good job, Steve. Um, excellent job. Um, it is, if you're a visitor here because you came to celebrate one of your grandchildren or children or something like that, um, thanks for being here. We do that every uh, Sunday. I open this way every Sunday. I started doing it, um, I think, during COVID, really, to get people excited or something. But it's just a joy to be in this room and to celebrate Jesus. It's a joy to be in a country where we get to come in here and talk about God, and we get to send out 12th graders and send up 5th graders in the name of God. And it should be something we celebrate as if we were at a sporting event. Come on, somebody. Um, <laughs> So, so we're in the third part of a four-week series entitled Our House, and we started this uh, a few weeks ago on our birthday. It was a celebration of when we became independent, a year um, since we became independent. We actually started our church in 1952, and I really thought it was a good opportune time for us to say, okay, who are we as a congregation? Who's God calling us to be? What does our house look like, or what should it look like? And so we started a couple of weeks ago focused in on, you know, God called us in 1952 to plant a church in this community to focus on getting Jesus into young families. And guess what? In 2024, he's doing the same thing. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed about what our house is. I mean, our house looks different than it did in 1952, for sure. We didn't meet here first. We met in the Woodman of the World building. Um, which you may know it's a stone building right across, on Breeze right across from Easy's. There's a Church of Christ, I think, uh, it meets there. Um, and they have it now. And, and that was our first, our first building. We were there when we bought this land and moved over here in 53. If you want uh, to take a walk down memory lane, it's really fun. Um, come to the church office one day, and the hallway right outside of my office has a whole bunch of our old pictures. It has the, the drawings for our original sanctuary on this property, which is the fellowship hall down there. It has the drawings when we built this. And it also has the very first congregational photo that we took, um, which is awesome. And it was in 1952, and ladies were dressed in the Triple H fashion. Triple H, babe, you know what I mean? Hats, heels, and hoes. Come on. Yeah, the Triple H. You had to bring it, Triple H, right? And how many, how many of you ladies are so thankful we don't live then? Yeah, hallelujah. Men, men were all in coats and ties, you know, and how, how many of us? Praise Jesus, um, you know, that we don't have to do that. Those coats look good on you, though, Parks. You're looking sharp there, buddy. Um, yeah, and so it's, it's different. We look way different. If you look at the minister in particular, the reverend, he looks way holier than me. I mean, the brother looks smarter than me. He looks like he's closer to God than me. He looks just like reverential. Like he walks into the room and people are like, God's here. That never happens to me, right? And, and so, so, but here's the thing. The, the method is different, but the message has never changed. Like, what, what we look like looks way different in 2024 than it did in 1952. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. But the message that we deliver has never changed. The message is the same. It's about Jesus. It's about getting Jesus into the lives of these fifth graders, these twelfth graders, even younger, so that when they go out into the world, the ways of the world have no power over them. Hey, can I tell you, the, the message is about taking husbands and wives and making them better, stronger husbands and wives. Because the more you lean into God, the better husband you can be, the better wife you can be. It's taking those of us adults who work in the world. It's like, how do we work in such a way that we can glorify God in whatever position he's placed us? The message hasn't changed. Two weeks ago when we started this, we said, and that message needs to get out there. Like we need, our house needs to be a house of invitation. It needs to be a house that says, come on in, the water's fine. Come here, come here, our pastor, man. He thinks he's really funny, and we laugh courteously every now and then. But, but, you know, he's pretty good. Hey, we have an amazing worship team. Just come, just come sit with me. Remember, we talked about the three knots. Be listening for those three knots. I'm not from here. I'm not doing well. I'm not prepared for this. Man, what a great opportunity. We need to be a congregation that says our house is open. 
come. And last week we talked about that our, our, house, our house shouldn't be empty. And hey, today is great. Uh, our, <laughs> Mr. Curran, who runs our slides uh, many Sundays, he told me in between services, he walked out and he goes, I'm going to be back a little bit early for the next service because I know it's going to be packed. He goes, I don't think this is a major. If you were here last week, I talked about people who play the majors. He goes, but it feels like a signature event. Like, it's a big event. Like, and, and the attendance is pretty big. There's a lot of people here today, which is great and wonderful. Um, and, and so it, it is, it, is, it should never be empty because we need to gather together to support one another, to care for one another, to worship alongside one another. Some of us come in here and we can't sing, but we need the person next to us singing for us. Right? And what, what a great thing it would be if we could just fill this place Sunday after Sunday. I tell you, I, I made an announcement about the building plans and, 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 and God's calling us bigger and deeper. And, and there are some things that I got to see on Friday and I'm super excited about and I can't show them to you yet, but just I'm giddy with excitement. Um, and, and one of the men in the, in the uh, meeting with me goes, is it big enough? And, you know, the, the, the flesh side of me said, no. But I was like, isn't it awesome? if we had that many people coming in and worshiping Jesus. Golly, it's gonna be great. Our house should not be empty. It should not be empty. And then, and then here's, here's today is, is, is our house needs to follow. We, we, it goes back to the first thing, but it's throughout this. Our house needs to have two things at the very core and center of who we are. Are there any, I'm gonna call on you because you're our eighth grade representative of the Knights. And, you, and I just saw you, and so I'm zeroing in on you, Lizzie. So I'm going to ask you a question. We, so this is one of our graduates, our eighth grade graduates, and I'm not going to have you stand up because I can see how red you are right now, and it's dark right there, but this is amazingly awesome. I wish Ozzy could get the camera on you. There's no way to do that. But, um, so what, what I'm going to ask her is we do chapel in here Monday through Friday. All of our kids, our students, they come in from the little four-year-olds who sit up here in the front row all the way uh, to the eighth graders who sit back over there. And we start off with the Pledge of Allegiance because we're a school and we do the pledge and we love our country. And, the, and, and then we do um, the, the verse of the week. And, and we have a, a, week, a weekly verse that we memorize, that our students are memorizing um, to get the word of God into their hearts, not just into their heads, right? And so we do that. And then the next thing we do is we talk about the core values of our church. But when I do chapel, I don't say, what are our core values? I'm like, but at St. Andrews, every day we, and the first two are What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Graduation is Tuesday, and I may say that you're not going to graduate. Are you kidding me, Lizzie Eversberg? And I just threw out your name for everyone listening. Well, that's all four of them. I just want, yeah. I love you. That's why I pick on you, because you're a sweet, amazing young lady. Um, yeah, it's love God, and then love people. First two things, love God, love people. And before you go, wow, Pastor Michael, that is amazing. Did you sit down with a whole advertising firm and create that? No. It's from the Bible. It, you know, somebody much smarter than us put that together once a long time ago, like 2,000 years ago. His name, I don't know if you've heard of him, was Jesus. So, so Jesus, if you, if you know the story, and this is going to come out of the book of Matthew, but the other gospel writers talk about this too, Luke specifically. Um, Matthew chapter 22 is, is where I am, and, and Jesus has been doing Jesus' thing, right? He's been walking around, he's been healing people, he's been delivering these amazing lessons and teaching this mind-blowing stuff, really just coming, this is the way you think it is? No, 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 this is the way it is. And so he's dropping this insane knowledge of what the kingdom of God is going to look like, and the Pharisees can't stand it, and the Sadducees can't stand it. They're the two big ruling religious groups of the day, right? They're, they're the rulers of religion. They have the market on who says what God is and how you should live with God. And, and they want Rabbi Jesus gone. And so they keep trying to trick him and trap him into saying something. And, and the Pharisees come at him, and they're like, hey, what about paying taxes, man? What are you supposed to do with that? That's how they sound in my head. Um, and and Jesus, Jesus, he answers them with a question, and he shuts them down. He's like, whose face is on the coin? Caesar's. Okay. And they're like, uh, well, we don't know what to say about that, and they walk away. The Sadducees are like, well, we got him. We got him. So the Sadducees step up, and they ask him a question about resurrection because the Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection. And Jesus answers them with a question and shuts them down, so much so that it says he silenced them. They just closed their mouth 
and walked away. Verse 34 says this, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again, right? See, the Pharisees step up, he slaps them down. Sadducees step up, he goes, no, homie, don't play that. Come on, somebody remember the 1990s. Um, And then um, the Pharisees come back and they ask him, one of them, an expert in religious law, tries to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Now this question isn't that groundbreaking, nor is it that shocking, because this question was debated by the rabbis forever, since the origination of the 613 commandments. Yeah, that's a lot of commandments to remember, isn't it? 613, and there's some weird ones in there. There are some that make sense, and some that are completely, I understand that, but there's some like, you can't eat meat and dairy products together. Y'all understand that means no cheeseburgers. C- come on, like, that, no cheeseburgers, what? How is that? And there's all these different things, so the rabbis would discuss and debate, what's the greatest commandment? What's the greatest commandment? What's the greatest commandment? And the answer that Jesus gives isn't that groundbreaking either. He says the first, and the greatest commandment is this, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He's, re- he's repeating Deuteronomy chapter six. A verse in there, it's called the Shema. Many of you have heard that before, the Shema, Shema Israel, right? And so there's this, this thing, and, and what it says in Deuteronomy six is say it in the morning when you, go, when you wake up, say it at night when you go to bed, put it on your doorpost so that as you come and you go, you see these words and remember to love God with everything. Teach them to your children, put them on your head. Have you ever seen an Orthodox Jew with a box on their head? It's called a phylactery. Inside of that are those words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Right? Love the Lord your God. So this is the first and greatest commandment to which most of the Pharisees would have gone, yeah, totally, makes sense. But then what he does is something different because he says, and just as important is this commandment. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Now, here's where it gets different. Because one, no one would have equated that commandment as in inequality with the first. It's like, whoa, you gotta love God. And Jesus is like, yes. But if you love God, you love who God loves his people. Now, that's an Old Testament scripture too, and in the Old Testament book where that scripture is delivered, what it says is your neighbor is your fellow Jew. And what it's calling the people of Israel to do is to love Jews like you love yourself. Love the people who look like you. Love the people who are where you're from. Love the people who went to your school. Love the people who do all the, but that's not what Jesus is saying, right? Because in Luke's In Luke's story of this, right after this, the guy goes, he says he sees wisdom in his answer. He goes, but who's my neighbor? And then Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan. Right, what Jesus was doing is he was breaking the boundaries of what it meant and who to love. What did he mean by neighbor? Insert that person into your mind. That person, that group of people, that, like if you're an Aggie, Longhorn, right? Those are those people. If you're a Longhorn, Sooners, right? Those are your people. If you're a TCU person, nobody, because we're better than all of you, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Whatever it is, whatever the group of person is that you find yourself, and I say that and you think of someone, know this, God created them, he gave them a life. They may not understand it, they may not agree with it, they may not accept his gift of life, that came from the cross, but it doesn't negate the fact that it's true. And what Jesus is saying here is, hey, you love God with everything, and when you love God with everything, then you love my children too. Even them. Our house needs to be a house where everyone is welcome. 
doesn't mean we walk away from biblical truth. It doesn't mean that we water down what our theology says and what we stand for. It doesn't mean that we walk away and say, there's more than sons and daughters. No, no, there's sons and there's daughters. There's more than one way to to the kingdom of heaven. No, there is one way to the kingdom of heaven. But if we follow these two commandments of what Jesus lays out, then there should never be a person who feels ostracized because there is no one for whom the kingdom of God was not created. No one. How do you do that? How do you get to a point where those people, you're like, I wanna give them everything. You love God first. You invest in your relationship with him. You give everything. He says, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Love God. And when you do that, that love that he has inside of you is just gonna overflow into loving one another. Can we be a house that says all are welcome? Not all things are permissible. Not all things are good for the benefit. But you're welcome here. Because in here, you're going to get to hear that you were created on purpose for a purpose. In here, you're gonna get to learn about the love of one who loved you so much. Even while we were sinners, he said, I'm gonna go to the cross for Michael Crocker. I'm gonna go to the cross for fill in your name. I'm gonna go to the cross for anyone who would accept it. And if we love God and we love our neighbor as ourself, let me tell you, the kingdom of God's gonna get bigger people who are going to give themselves over to the way of the kingdom of God are going to increase. That's why we're here. Our house has got to be one that stands on biblical truth and we got to be welcoming. We got to be open so that when they come, they know your love. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for all the ways that you move in our life. And Father, there may be people listening in in this room or online today that don't know your love that are hearing my words and say, yeah, but I know a lot of Christians and they've always been judgmental and whatever it is. Father, I I pray that forgiveness would fill their hearts. I ask for forgiveness for those moments where I have got it wrong, where the church has got it wrong and we've pushed away rather than drawn in. Father, may we live our lives in such a way, may this house be a house that worships you and loves you in such a way that people who are far from you hear you calling their name. May they hear you say, come home. Maybe today is that day that they say no to the ways of the world, but yes to the ways of the kingdom. If it is today, God, we celebrate with you. We ask that those of us who know you would go deeper today, that we would challenge ourselves in our relationship, that we would go deeper with you in our knowledge of you and our love for you, and may that overflow to a world who desperately needs it. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers are coming forward this morning. We're going to pass the, the offertory. And we're a church that believes in tithing here, that God gave us 100%. And he said, you keep 90 and give 10 back to me and, and watch what we do. And you, you're faithful in that. Thank you for that. Um, we ask a blessing over this offering today. Father, we thank you and praise you for all that you have given us. All that we have is yours. And so we take a moment to give back to you. Say, receive this offering. Through it, may ministry be done in your name, that others may know they're loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, lift his countenance unto you, and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday, a blessed week. We'll see you next time. God bless.